Back to the channel, y'all. We are just up for a monstrous adventure today. Me and OSG here in Big Bend uh, National Park, located in South Texas, and uh, really close to the Rio Grande. Right now, we've we've started our journey out here. Uh, this was your idea. It was my idea. It <laughs> is it is a baby moon. She wanted to come see the park, and we are testing the limits of the OP and we are doing some some off-grid overlanding camping if you will uh, over here and they call this backcountry camping so we got a backcountry permit and we are off of uh, old ore road is what it's called it's a they tell you you have to have an off-road vehicle to even come down here it is uh, it is just a rocky nasty road and we are in the middle of nowhere the next campsite from us I think is like two miles we're just we're at our own devices y'all if something happens we're we're kind of we're kind of screwed but we're gonna set up camp right here and there's not a drop of water to be found fishing freaks so sorry to tell you there ain't gonna be no fishing in this video but we are gonna do some adventure camping I tried to take you as far away from the water as possible and I think I, did. I think you did it we're in the desert now where we started out this morning it was it was really neat because we had uh, the Chizos mountains all around us uh, we had quite a few trees and we went into these draws and there was a lot of shade uh, and we saw lots of wildlife it was a really cool experience and I was unable to find uh, a camp spot for longer than one night like everything is booked so I literally had to just pick four different spots actually five different spots around this park so we're, we're getting to see a big chunk of Big Bend I've never been down here you guys are going to love the scenery down here it's pretty incredible it's it's one of our national treasures but being a texan it's a bucket list thing to come down here so how we got it set up here guys for survival uh we have an extra five gallons of diesel we've already had to utilize that some extra drinking water right here that's another five gallons we just filled up our tanks in the other park area so we got potable water in these tanks we got 60 gallons of that and we're about to do the setup of the op out here in the desert terrible gas mileage coming down here in the southern wind about 20 mile an hour in my face with all the extra weight 12 and a half miles to the gallon not the best there's lots of just spots of rocks like this you know i really should deflate my tires uh, just driving over it you know you don't want to have a puncture out here because no one is coming to save your rear end like i said bears are in the park so we do have to lock up our our food uh if we didn't have the op so they encourage everyone to do that in the camp literally had a mama bear and two cubs come into uh, the main campground last night they were uh they actually ended up if you guys watch the lake life family channel we caught them over at a trash can we were just trying to wrap up uh, the end of the day filming a vlog and they just showed up right there uh, and they were walking through the camp park ranger was like oh, not again they're they're actually pretty cute and they're not any bigger than me. i was gonna say you <laughs> they are a little bit bigger pregnant, than you pregnant uh by the day though getting a little yeah getting, getting bigger but they're only like 150 pound uh they're mexican black bears so pretty cool yeah. saw a new animal saw a new animal captured it they also have mountain lions out here rattlesnakes uh, scorpions, tarantulas, again, this was your idea, centipedes, oh. all of that fun stuff. Hopefully this isn't going to roll off the mountain. It comes oh out. There it goes. Oh, you're chained to your truck. So this swings right here, and this swings. 
So it allows you to just go down some really nasty roads. Much more nasty than my truck could even handle. Honestly, this is nicer than what I was even expecting out here. It's, it's rough, it's harsh conditions, but the camping spots, you have to find a designated spot. You can't just go uh, full, uh, you know, you can't park in the cactuses. Yeah. You gotta be in a designated area. Back country, but. Back country, but it's not like national forest where you have dispersed camping, where you can just kind of pick anywhere. A little bit more organized than that. This actually came with it. This is a uh, it says 19 millimeter Australian. Um, this little attachment for the drill it comes with a hand crank, but this just makes things real easy. There we go. That's nice. Mm -hmm. Okie Solid as rock. Awning and launch area. Woo! Where's the pool? <laughs> I didn't see that on the we map. We should have brought in an inflatable pool and then used like one tank. <laughs> yeah, seriously. It's worth it. Oh, make your own shade. Look at it. Beautiful. Oh man, baby, you do beautiful work. Beautiful. I think, uh, I think we chose the right angle here for the sun for cooking this afternoon. Let's pop a top. Swing her out, pop her in the corner. You gotta wedge your butt in here. This is the <laughs> technique right here. You gotta arch it. You gotta watch out for that tummy. You arch it, watch the pregnant belly on the tire. Pop these latches. This is a big bug time. This is when all the bugs can get in. So we're we'll watching. This is heavy. Yeah, there's a mouth already. This is heavy, so ease her on in that little space. I got you. All right. And, yep. Then you do your little latch, and you're ready for the great outdoors. Supposedly, the park ranger he told us that there is a super cool. It's his wife's favorite. They've been coming here for 20 years. Uh, it's his wife's favorite spot to go to and it's close to here. So we're actually going to detach the truck uh, and we're going to head over to this place. It's called like Ernst, uh, Ernest True. Talia or something like Some, that. I, I don't Ernest T. <laughs> Ernest T. We're going to head over to Ernest T in Southern Talk and uh, supposedly there's a place to find some shade. It doesn't seem like there would be. Uh, it looks like we're just in the middle of Mexico right now. Yeah, right now I'm getting a little discouraged. <laughs> yeah. Look around here. It's all around. <laughs> uh, yeah. Like, no one is coming for you. Wow. You get stranded out here. I think that's why I'm like, I'm getting a little nervous because if something were to happen to us, nobody would know. No nobody one would, would know. know. They would never know. sizzle an egg so we went like four miles down old ore pretty rough in the truck you know I was a little worried looking online to bring the opus down old ore like all the way into the heart of it but now I kind of want to because it's, it's just made for it I found a little canyon and supposedly there's water down here so where there's water in the desert I think there's usually animals you think we're gonna find any shade down here? Uh, shade right ahead in the little cavernous spot. In the, yeah. Should we go in the caves? Yeah. Oh, I see the shimmer from the water. Ooh. It's in that hole right there. And there she blows. Oh, this is torture for an animal because I can't get down to it. 
It did say if it got low, the animals would drown because they can't get in. Yeah. They can't get out. Oh my gosh. I don't see any bass swimming around. <laughs> so, I'm going to say it's a no-go. Look, there's a frog. You see a frog? One sign of oh my life. gosh, you do. There's a frog in the gosh darn desert. Down what in the water. hay? <laughs> look at these lines right here. Like, look at the... Pretty cool. Not fishing, but pretty cool. Oh, man. It's just, there's no way to capture this. It's too big. It is. This road is way bumpier than what it looks like. It looks like it'd just be flat. But, oh man, I'm losing my voice. There go. Frogs have got a hold of my throat, man. <laughs> I think it's that, that desert. The, the cactus <laughs> pollen eye has gotten me. <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm going to need to soothe my throat with some cold buffalo trace. I may just have to shut up and just show you guys some beautiful stuff. So. <laughs> Brethren and sisters out there, mmm, 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 mmm. What a day it is to wake up in the middle of nowhere. And today we are heading to another camp on Old Ore Road, which is this nasty, quite nasty road. So there's two things that we need to go see uh, down on the southern side, and then we're going to go back up and then come down Old Ore Road and go to this place called McKinney Springs. So if any of y'all are planning on doing this, um, you can take note of these sites, but there's definitely some cool ones just right in the middle of Old Ore as well. So we're going to make some breakfast here at the OP, and then uh, we're going to get on the road and have another adventure today. Really? There must be the yellow. There must be like a hole. A hole. There, maybe, and the rocks there, maybe. Yeah, they're up under there. Yeah, maybe holes. With the uh, rod and reel, or with their hands. No, with the hooks. The line. Hooks. Hooks in the line. Yeah. 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 Wow. <laughs> so uh, he's saying they catch like twenty. To 60 pound yellow cats. Yeah, and right here. Yellow cat fish in this hole right here, but there's not really any bass. Blue, so. I got a blue, blue, blue cat, but it's a key in my phone. Yeah, blue catfish. So yellow cats, much more grand and much big head. But no no bass, no labina. No, no. Oh. It's a carp. <laughs> okay. Oh, this is beautiful. It it's is a beautiful, beautiful place to sing and fish. Yeah. On the banks of the Rio Grande. Gosh, I wish I would have known. There's huge catfish in here. This would be the time. This is normally when they spawn and the river's down. Like you could go noodle for them, I'm sure. Oh my gosh. Yeah, this is the time. 
but I'm not getting in there. There's probably some huge alligator gar. I brought one fishing pole, guys. One fishing pole. I don't have any. I don't have any catfish bait though. I only have bass lures, and he told me there's no bass. There's no bass in here. I, I was know, like, you kept I was asking like, bass? like four times. Like sure, boss. Labinas, mucho. No, okay. Dang. <laughs> he said tortugas. He said catfish, and he said carp, mucho carp. Mm -hmm. So, but how cool would that be to come here and catch fish basically in the desert? Feel fulfilled that I at least got to see water. I feel fulfilled. Like it water. just makes me happy. Like I have to be around it, and then just talking about fishing with a fellow fisherman. All right, yes, that gave me some rejuvenation, y'all. Some rejuvenation. But what what a hike! At first when we came in here, I was like, ah, this. Oh, what? What's wrong? What? Did you see something? Oh yeah, it's probably a turtle sliding off in the water. Now I got I got my polarized lenses on. I'm, I'm looking. I'm like, could there be? Could I noodle a catfish if I saw one? Fishing for a good heart, even in the desert. A little time check. It is 11:35, and it is probably 92 degrees right now. So we are going to pack up and head on out. We're taking the Opus to another camp, and we're going up about a thousand feet. Thank goodness. Now, from what I've read, every thousand feet is about a five degree temperature difference. Uh, five degrees being cooler, the higher you go. So, man, looking forward to that. But we did have an awesome hike. Saw a really cool canyon, bunch of uh, yeah. caverns in there, caves. Got to meet Jesus. He sang us some songs. Uh, talked about fishing. I got tempted to go fishing, which I did not expect to do while I was down here. Uh, so it was really neat. I've caught bass out of the Rio Grande, out of Lake Amistad, and uh, 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 Lake Falcon. Uh, I've actually fished the river on Falcon, the Rio Grande, and caught a lot of nice bass. But uh, no bass down here. So the dangle will have to wait till I'll, uh, I get back to some actual bass waters. But uh, we're going to head on to a place called Bikini Springs now. And hopefully it is more beautiful than this because this is like straight up desert it's a whole different climate than when we first got here and stayed at the base of the Chizos mountains uh, I would say this is my least favorite camp spot so far Stephanie would agree she's ready to look at something more beautiful so let's pack it up and let's get on get on the off road <laughs> traveling I sound like a frog I know apologize we're currently traveling tra traveling 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 that's a new word on the north end of Old Ore Road going about 10 12 miles an hour in the truck <clears throat> I did deflate my tires a little bit before I got on this road you want to tell them something else because I just sound like <laughs> I sound like a Smoker, smoker, like straight up smoker. <laughs> Is there anything else you can add to this segment? Uh, I feel like we've been traveling on these bumpy roads all day long. <laughs> I'm just having a problem with them because I feel like baby Ben's going bum, 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 bum. And there's also <laughs> these little these little wispy buggers right here. You can probably hear that wind. <clears throat> that, that thing literally looks like seaweed on the ocean floor. Tell them your theory. So I thought that like pretty much everything, this was like the bottom of the ocean at one time and that that was seaweed. We just went to a dinosaur exhibit to kind of chill out for, you know, getting out of the sun. And it was saying that this was covered by ocean, I guess, how many years ago? Millions, millions of years ago. Maybe a million or something. 
my theory, the pipe cleaner theory, <laughs> seaweed that never left. I've never seen, I've never seen those kind of, I can't even call them cactus. They are. They're little whippies. I mean, if you were standing next to them and the wind got you, <laughs> it would hurt like hell. nose in the book because I got a little nervous. I was like, well, maybe if I just don't look. <laughs> has kind of a point, but uh, we're going to make it, y'all. We're going to make it. This is kind of a doozy. Got to figure out the right path here. It'll be easy going down. It won't be easy getting back up. See now, I, no, there's nobody to book these spots. Yeah, is there? Is it too late to back up? <laughs> Thank you. 
just a little dusty. Ah. I mean, uh, I guess they're not that bad. They're still, but I think they're still scratched. They're light up. indentions. Not, not terrible. We made it. That's the only thing. Yeah, it wouldn't be an off-road trip without a few of those. You know what I'm saying? Well, you know what? You got us here. I'm proud of you. Because if it was up to me, I would have turned around and come back the other way. <laughs> well, I don't think we're going to cook yet. We're going to chill out for a sec. Yeah. Chips and salsa on the other side. Chips and salsa. I would, I would maybe wrestle a full-grown bear for a cold Coors right now. Oh. Like, maybe wrestle a full adult bear. Definitely one of these Mexican black bears. I would take him down for a cold Did cooler. Did you just right hear my tummy growl? No, is Ben hungry? <laughs> let's let's get little Ben I'm fed. Starving. So we are about to cook up some dinner out here at the McKinney Springs campsite. We're about seven miles in. I've seen one truck. I doubt we'll see another one. So there's only like six or seven campsites, maybe a few more along this 26 mile road. It, this is the most isolated, most off grid I've ever been in the state of Texas, especially truck camping. I've been in some crazy places, you know, hunting and stuff like that where it's remote, but this is like off the charts remote for just a park that you can go to. And uh, here's just a couple more facts. Um, you know, it says generators are not even allowed. Uh, you know, you got to be careful with your food. There's no campfires. This is like such a dry area. Um, and you do have to have a permit if you do come out here. Haven't even seen a roadrunner. So Steph is going to cook us up some stew tonight. It looks like we got some bacon going in. It's actually going to be cooler temps tonight because we came up a thousand feet in elevation. Thank you. Over here is the Chizos Mountains, so that is where we stayed on the first night. So we're quite a bit of ways, as you guys can see. We're traveling like hours uh, every day just to camp in new spots. I want to make sure to, to get an amazing star time lapse tonight. And then tomorrow, hopefully, <laughs> we can get back off this old old road. That one spot that Steph was freaking out about has got me worried getting back up it. Coming down was easier. We're gonna have to get creative to get out of here, but um, off to the next spot tomorrow. Let's enjoy the evening, some beautiful stars and isolation out here in the desert and the God blessed great outdoors. Lights out, we'll see you in the morning. Another beautiful morning out here in Big Ben and I've got a little bit of my voice back so I'm excited. The stars last night were gorgeous, finally got an amazing time lapse uh, over the Chizos. Beautiful sunrise here and we're walking this uh, little creek bed going to this oak tree. So we saw it from our camp, we figured there's some water and there's tadpoles living in this thing. There's literally frogs that live out here in this desert. Uh, the spring is popping up making some fresh water here in this creek bed. And uh, we're just looking for tracks and everything. I found some javelina tracks. Didn't get to see a javelina last night, but they're clearly in here. If you look at this mud right here, it's been all torn up by the, uh, the javelinas. And then I'm looking right in the middle of the creek bed and I see a big paw track. Um, very big. 
and I have to assume that that is a mountain lion. Which is quite scary. If I was a mountain lion, I would hang out here because javelinas are coming all through here. It's easy food. There are two buzzards sitting up there on the rock. Just watching us? There. I'm a little know. spooked. Yeah, I don't know about I don't know about this because we're just getting like it's it's funneling down and there's brush on both sides where we can't see. I've never seen a mountain lion track. It's my first time. And it's with you. A pregnant great. wife. So let's uh, let's yeah. take a safer let's... route. I can almost hit the notes. Uh, this is going to be a uh, pretty, pretty trepid uh, off-road operation here. It's going to take us probably about two and a half hours just to get off this about six or seven mile stretch of road. Uh, it is awesome though to see the landscapes change. To literally, this used to be the ocean floor. So there's like old pieces of coral. Um, there's these seaweed-looking cactus plants. And we had a pretty fun exploration this morning. We're going to another part of the state park now. Every place has been different and cool in its own aspects. You see different plants, you see different animal life. Uh, and we finally found some mule deer poop. That's good. It's like pre, pre scouting for my, uh, my draw if I ever get drawn in years to come. Come down here and hunt. So uh, we're going to continue the off road overlanding journey uh, with the truck and the Opus and uh, get to our next spot, so enjoy the ride. Flaving the tires really helped. It did. It helps like grab over the tire and carry it forward. Because uh, going down it, not so much. Well, that was cool. I thought it was going to be more exciting <laughs> than that. I apologize, y'all. <laughs> made it look easy. Thank you. 
get up through these rocky areas. You know, if I didn't have the trailer, it'd be no big deal. But I gotta say, four low on this diesel is nasty. Let's shift it back into four, four high. When you uh, when you take a number deuce <laughs> in the OP camper and go off roading sloshing around in 96 <laughs> degree weather. It's disgusting, I swear I can smell it in this car. I swear I can smell it in the car too. Okay, so it's like drifted. It's not just me. So I'm gonna I'm gonna call the toilet the turlet is a the latrine. The latrine is like an emergency situation. I, I'm thinking if it was colder, it wouldn't be a big deal, I think. But it's just like stewing. <laughs> that's, that's enough of that. Anyways, we're going to get to our spot. Uh, the roads are still pretty bad. But uh, they are not as bad. Not nearly as bad as Old Or. But you still got to have four-wheel drive to get through a lot of these places. Sorry. You are the shot, babe. I am the shot? You are the shot. It so, so we officially have made it to Pine Canyon. I would say it's still pretty remote. It's not quite not quite like old ore, but it's it's still I mean it's still out here. Being in the RV park is cool, but just getting out on your own with the family and then not hearing a thing, not hearing another human, uh, it's pretty awesome. And while we've been here, we haven't heard a single airplane. And while we've been on the the off off grid roads. Uh, we've only seen like five or six vehicles total, so we have had very, very little human interaction and mechanical interaction, plus our cell phone service has been basically nil. We're going to um, attempt to do a hike back in here. Steph just spotted the first mule deer of the trip. Really? I was in the zone. I was, stri I was striding. She was like, bang, bang. <laughs> I'm like, what? Something bit you? I turn around, there's a mule deer like 10 yards off the path. Finally saw one. So up in this uh, little canyon where it's shaded, it's cooler. And there's some green areas. There's actually some stuff for me to eat, it looks like. so. A little little scouting for years in advance. Put a GPS waypoint on the spot. Mule deer. Be looking for doo doo. Now let's let's get a damage report of today's off roading adventure. Actually, the last few days, going down the roughest. Uh, one of the roughest roads out here, old ore, and really having to navigate some nasty stuff. Pretty easy fix here, but our uh, hose, they got caught in the wheel back there. I stuffed this all the way back in this uh, little cubby, but somehow it was able to uh, catch, and then the roller got it. So it's all kinked up, but that's an easy fix. Another little thing that is a pet peeve for me is... These, these little screws that lock this door in back behind here, they have um, stripped out. The threads have stripped out. Uh, I'm going to have to put some JB Weld on there. Another one did it on the inside on the top latch as well. That's that little screw right there that is, uh, is coming out of that side. So uh, just needs to be JB Welded in there and should be okay. The window that's inside of there, the screen, uh, actually the mechanism broke. So the spring inside of here, after we went down Old Ore Trail, uh, it no longer uh, stays. So this um, this bug screen right here, it wants to suck up the other screen. That one broke on the back window. All the other ones are fine though. So a few things to note on the inside, in the bathroom. Uh, the water pulls up a bunch in here. This would be a big help if this was lower. If it was just uh, like an inch lower, it had a, a, a small grade to it because the water's always pulling up and I'm, I'm having to like soak up the water and take my hands and feet and like scoop it towards the drain. It's pretty annoying. 
and then when the water hits the door, it drains down the door, it goes out from underneath the door, and then it, it gets all over the floor. And uh, if you're not level, you know, it'll drain around just depending on your the gray that you're at. So I got to get some like weather stripping or something, figure that out to where it's going to stay inside of the bathroom. One other thing that did happen, this is this is not an opus problem, it was just an off-roading issue, is uh, we did take a chunk out of the tire right there uh, and the rim. So we came, uh, came across some rocks that just couldn't avoid that came in from the side and uh, busted up that rim right there. It didn't lose any air pressure though. We got a little chunk out of the tire, but it's fine. Uh, great thing about it is we got two more on the back old mud terrains one more disappointing thing I think this is maybe one of the most disappointing things for you yeah. uh, Is the outlets though? Um, the the 110 outlets, I guess you have to be hooked up to power uh, The shore power in order for them to work. So all of our outlets like this one. I think there are three on this thing uh, none of them work. They got USB chargers USB connections, uh, they only also have just the regular 110 um, outlet and they don't work. The saving grace to that, as I brought my Jackery, and um, you know, I have two of these things. <clears throat> this one is the 1000. I've had this thing constantly charging my batteries uh, for all of my uh, recording equipment, and then we've had fans running at night off of these uh, using 110. And recharging the the little rechargeable fans, and it's only down to 52 percent. I've had something charging on this constantly, so I'm glad I brought that. And that's a that's a nifty little off grid uh, battery to keep you out there a long time. That thing has solar panels that hook up to it as well. And now it is time to cook up some steaks here on our final night, and we're heading back to the treehouse tomorrow to get back to Emmy. Uh, and I also discovered on uh, it was yesterday yesterday morning that we have hit 1 million subscribers on this channel humongous thank you to you guys uh, especially the ones that have been around for a long time I've run into some of you uh, at lakes and other areas that you've been there since like 10,000 20,000 subs uh, so thank you so much. It's a uh, it's a big milestone. I've been doing this over 10 years So special thank you and uh, a couple of my buddies pushed me over pushed me over the line uh, guys like Lunkers, Flair, uh, Hex uh, Who am I missing? John B even um, so they bumped me over the edge and uh, I love those guys too So thank you and if you want to see more outdoor action y'all and me with a better voice Subscribe right now if you haven't already and smash that like button for surviving in the desert with well It's not really surviving when you got the the OP this trip was just an amazing Adventure and uh, it's it's probably the most off-grid that I've ever been when I'm not hunting and I did it with Stephanie So I can't believe she did all the things we did we went on str strenuous hikes every day I mean she was she kept up so so if you want to see more action from this trip more of the hikes and all that subscribe to the lake life family channel that's our family vlog channel it's linked down below thanks again guys love you and i'll see you on the next outdoor adventure